Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you at the top of your game professionally, but feeling burned out, or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or unfulfilled personally? Or are you in transition, simply juggling so many things, you find it hard to take care of your own needs? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate the four universal superpowers— These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated, and they include awareness, intuition, action, and acceptance. Toward the end of the show, in a segment called Superpowers for Success, I ask my guest about her superpowers, and the answers will give you the strength, perspective, and power to live a well-woman life. I'm so happy you're here, so thanks for tuning in. This episode of The Well Woman Show is brought to you by Collective Action Strategies, supporting organizations that support women and families, and by Well Woman Life Movement Challenge Quiz, your resource for living your best life. If you're in burnout or major transition, this is your time to figure out what's holding you back from making the changes you need to make in order to live your fullest, most joyful life. The cause of all of our challenges, personal or professional, can actually be rooted in the lack of internal superpowers and or external supports. Our Well Woman Life Framework tells you which stage of the Well Woman Life Cycle you're in and what to do about it so you can truly live your best life. You can find out more at wellwomanlife.com slash quiz. I'm so thankful for support from Natural Awakenings Magazine in New Mexico, a monthly green healthy lifestyle publication. And for support from High Desert Yoga, promoting optimum physical health, clarity of mind, and spiritual inspiration for all. Hello, hello, and welcome. If this is your first time tuning into The Well Woman Show, I want to give you a great big welcome and um, let you know a couple of things here before we get started. The annual Well Woman Superpower Retreat is September 9th this year, and it's combined with a Women's Leadership Summit on September 10th. So if you're interested in those and in being in beautiful New Mexico in September, which is just the best time to be here, uh, go to wellwomanlife.com slash events for more information. And Uh, If you haven't gone over to iTunes to rate and review the show, I highly encourage you to do that. I'm picking different reviews and reading them out on the air, and some people will be winning prizes. So definitely head over there and um, check it out at iTunes. You can go to wellwomanlife.com slash iTunes and just rate and review. It's super helpful, actually, uh, to get this show out in front of other women who may not know about it. So um, definitely want to encourage you to do that. And um, also, I want to thank our sponsors. The uh, Well Woman Show is extremely grateful to Natural Awakenings Magazine in New Mexico and High Desert Yoga. And uh, they provide um, monthly support. And uh, definitely want you to know about those. Again, links in the show notes. You can also continue the conversation in the Well Woman Life community group at wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook. And you can get all the links to this show and this episode at wellwomanlife.com slash 124 show. So I want to introduce my guest for today. Steph Poston is... um, 
from Sandia Pueblo. She's a Pueblo woman. She's the owner of Poston and Associates. She's committed to inspiring tribal communities through culturally competent, community-based approaches. She has nearly three decades' experience in public and community relations, strategic facilitation, and training at the tribal, federal, state, and local levels. She's been named the Woman of Influence in 2017 and also Small Business Champion by SCORE in 2018. So a wealth of information, and um, I'm excited because today's topic is juggling career and family. And what we're going to talk about is um, how we all do it. We all juggle career and family and how, how she does it. We're going to talk about overall wellness and also viewing fear as a motivator. So I'm excited to bring on Steph Poston. Steph, I want to start by just asking you to tell our listeners what it is you're working on and how does it impact women? So one of the things that um, my company, Poston Associates, has actually evolved over the years. And so some of the things that I'm currently working on um, are really to change the narrative in Indian country from we all know the challenges of suicide, of substance issues, but there are so many great things happening and uh, Native women are at the helm of great nonprofits, uh, uh, for-profit entities doing amazing work. And so my work has really focused around branding, around um, uh, strategic facilitation, strategic planning to really ensure that there's a good path forward for some of these tribes and tribal entities that I work with um, and really utilizing the media to tell a good story about and a positive story about what is happening in Indian country. Yeah, because I mean, we always hear, you know, it's just horrific stats, right, about different <laughs> populations, one one of those being Native people. Um, and so what you're trying to do is say, uh, you know, yeah, but we have all these other things going on as well. Right. There, there's no, uh, there's not, it's not to take away from some of those crisis issues that are, are happening. And I certainly support the work that's being done there, but how do we showcase, um, and really elevate some of the positive work that is happening and the way that that positively impacts young native women is they get to see, um, Young, they get to see other Native women in politics, in healthcare, in education, in language preservation, and it, and it gives them something to look forward to, uh, and they can find role models in those examples. Hmm. And so, what are some of the ways you are showcasing and elevating that work so that other people can hear about it? So some of my work includes some public relations, and that's just working with tribes and tribal entities with press, simple press releases and contacting the media to talk about that, to advocate about it. Um, some of it just includes there's a group at Santa Fe Indian School called Brave Girls, and so they meet pretty regularly, and they've asked me to come speak with them on several occasions. Um, and j- and one of the outings they had was they wanted to learn how to golf. So I hosted them at Sandia Golf, and we had the pro teach them. And then after that, uh, hosted them for uh, a light dinner and had Deb Holland come in and Charlotte Little, um, both who are involved in politics, and then my niece, who at the time was doing language preservation. So all these uh, other Pueblo women came to speak to them and it, and be able to elevate the story that way. Yeah, because I mean, what what you're what you're talking about really is role models, right? And mentoring, and so that young women can see other women ha- being successful at at these things. Correct. Yeah, I mean that's so important. And I know, uh, I think I was the last time I saw you maybe was at your Native American Business Women Summit that brought women together from all over. I mean, not, not just one or two States, but really from far and wide, um, Native American and indigenous women who are, 
either running a business or they want to, you know, start a business. Um, can you talk about that effort and how that came about and what the next step is there? Sure. So it's this idea about having uh, Michelle Obama did something where she had the state of women address. So I wanted to have the state of Pueblo women, but that was a pretty big undertaking. So I was able to collaborate with seven other like-minded women to come up with this native women's uh, business summit that happened uh, in April. But first we went, we had, you know, we were, we were getting into planning and what does that look like? And um, so when I work with tribal communities, you always say, well, before you start to create something you think people want, you should really ask them what you want. So in October, we had an Elevate session at where 75 uh, Native women showed up and we had these little um, focus group sessions where they gave input about if we did have a full-on summit, uh, what would they like to learn about? What tools do they need? And so from that Elevate session in October, we built a full agenda for the summit uh, that happened on April 14th of 2018, um, where over 200 w- women came who, like you said, either have are interested in starting a business, are in the middle of a business, or want to um, grow their business. Uh, it was an amazing turnout. Uh, the vibe in the room was super exciting. It, it, it's Every time I think about it, I think I still get the chills because it was it was an idea and we really just saw the fruits of that. Um, so what we're doing next is at the end of June, we will have a strategic planning session for ourselves. And based on the evaluations that came back, um, talk about next steps and what are the strategies and what are the gaps. And so that way we move forward in a meaningful way and really develop uh, programs and initiatives that meet the needs of these 200 plus women who attended the session, who are um, excited and hungry for more information. And so what were some of the major takeaways for you from that summit that um, you'll be probably discussing and mulling over at your strategic planning? Um, I think a lot of what we heard is, I, is confidence, right? That's a soft skill. Um, even at my age, we all sort of struggle with that imposter syndrome. Um, I think as Native women, it really, uh, it, it's, it's, it's hard to overcome sometimes. So I, you know, how do you build that? Um, how do you just network amongst each other? People really want to see a directory to support each other because there's not the Native population. I mean, as Native communities, we're strong, but population-wise, uh, our numbers are, 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 are not as high as other groups. And so you feel like you're working alone. But when we came together with 200 of us, it really gave us that support system about some of the same struggles we try to do with, um, I think everybody, you included, I mean, we juggle um, running a business, we juggle uh, raising our children and supporting our aging parents. And But as tribal women, we also have an added piece, and that's to keep our cultures alive um, and how we participate that, with that and engage in that in a very meaningful way so that our children will have that um, that peace with them at all times, a part of them. So, yeah, yeah that's it's a little different. That is. I mean, that's something that is very specific to the Indigenous women community, right? That the, the whole huge piece of keeping your cultural life is is a big part of your everyday existence. Yeah. So how does that show up for you, you know, on a daily basis or weekly or whatever, like, cause you're living it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people like to say we live in two worlds, but for me, I, I, I'm Stephanie Poston, Sandia Pueblo women, woman every day, no matter if I, have a meeting with you in Gallup, New Mexico, in Albuquerque, if I go to Washington, D.C., 
if I, that is me all the time. Um, so I, I, it's not like I live in, I, I, I don't like to describe it. I live in two worlds. I live in one, I, I, I show up as Stephanie Poston from San Diego Pueblo each and every day. So part of that is just every time I get a chance to be a part of, um, events in the community, I, 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 I really make an effort to be a part of that. Um, my children have been raised here at the Pueblo. We still live here at the Pueblo. So all, you know, every day we're around our community members. I, I live, both my brothers live close by. My sister lives close by. My mom lives down the street. Um, and so there's always an opportunity to be a part of the community. Um, our family this summer has two big, uh, this summer and in the fall has uh, weddings coming up. So there's a lot of prep that goes into that and supporting the family and coming together. So all the time there's those opportunities and you just try and be a part of it as much as you can. Um, you know, running a business, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's, can be a challenge to juggle it all. Um, but I've managed to get through cause it's called post in an associate. So I have a lot of colleagues and counterparts who can step in and support me when I need that support. Um, and every day, and every day I three, four times a week, I try and get to the, to the gym. Um, but I really count on prayer a lot to, uh, on a daily basis to support my overall well-being and ground me and bring balance. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And it, it is such a juggle. And I, I don't know that we ever really achieve balance, but we're, you know, we try, right? Um, okay, Stephanie, we're going into the segment called Superpowers for Success. So I want to ask you a few questions here. The first one is, um, what does success in life mean for you? Success in life means that my children are happy and healthy and productive. And that really translates to uh, my community here because we are a part of that community. And from our Sandia community, that translates out to our neighbors. And uh, so when, when your household is in order and your kids are happy, um, you can contribute to the greater good of things um, e more easily. It's never perfect, but it certainly helps if um, the kiddos are happy and healthy. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely second that. Mm. Okay, and Steph, you were named a New Mexico Woman of Influence in 2017. And uh, Native Woman Business Owner of the Year. And then this year, you were named a Small Business Champion by SCORE. And so you're, you're clearly making an impact and, and doing a lot. Um, how do you take care of yourself in order to be able to do all of, the, all of what you do in the world? Um, as I said before, part of most days start with um, either walking, um, some sort of prayer, uh, and just when it, when I feel like things are getting stressful is to really catch myself and try not to overreact. I certainly fall off periodically, but to really be in charge of my own emotions, um, there's no need to get upset. It doesn't help. There's no need to be angry. Uh, it doesn't speed up a solution. Uh, but to just kind of keep your emotional IQ in check um, and then go ask for help when you need it. Yeah. You know. Do you feel that's, like that's. Go ahead. Yeah. Do you feel like um, uh, uh, some of the stress that happens is a result of. Um, miscommunication with people or fear or how would you sort of categorize most of the stressful feelings that come up on a daily basis? I mean, right. Like we have to deal with this almost, almost on a daily basis. Things happen where you can choose to, you know, respond one way or another way. And 
you have to really call on all of those habits and, and uh, practices that you've been building over the years to really be able to respond in a way that's not going to make things worse, like you said, with anger or different things. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, like running a business and that, you know, you know, and other people work with me, um, at the end of the day, all I have is my integrity, my name and my word. Right. And so I, I, sometimes I get myself a little worked up, like, oh, is it going to get done? Um, and then I have to reflect the people you've called to your team. That's your A players, man. They're good. They're good at what they do and they, they get it done and just reassure them and myself that, uh, you know, we, we were the ones selected to carry out the work and we're going to get it done and we're going to deliver uh, quality and good and it's going to be an amazing project. But um, I find myself when I I start to get a little anxious and uh, and then I have to pull back and say that, you know, just calm down, think it through, choose your words wisely. Um, it's just I, I think a lot of it's being just self-aware. When, when you know your triggering points and you know you're about to to not behave in a way you would go, oh, my God, did I just do that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and, 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 I start, I, and I've fallen off and I've said to myself, oh, God, did you just say that? Right. But then you got to learn from it and, you know, forgive yourself and learn and go forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you you just mentioned some things that really bring up the idea of fear So fear of not performing, fear of not, you know, delivering, there's just a lot of fears, right, that we deal with. And that can be a real motivator. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that? Right. Yeah. So I I always tell people there's two, two emotions, love or fear. And so when people come at you angry or hostile or whatever, there's some sort of, it's some sort of fear brewing underneath, right? Um, or if somebody has compassion for you or empathetic, then, you know, there's, there's that love piece. But um, that little bit of fear that makes you kind of perk up a little bit and do that extra thing or follow up on something or that instinct that says, hey, I better make that extra call or... Um, making sure my to-do list is in order that, that motivates you to take your performance a a little further. Um, I would say fight your fears because that is nothing that I've ever accomplished that I go in there fully confident. I, there's fear, fear of failure, right? It's, it's natural, but then that motivates you to up your game a little bit, to polish up a little bit. Um, and can make a world of difference in your, in your business and in your family life about uh, making things a little bit better. Yeah, and I love what Elizabeth Gilbert says about fear. She says, um, you know, let fear uh, come along for the ride, but don't let it in the driver's seat. <laughs> right. Right. So, I like that too. Yeah, it's like you you know it's going to be there, right? Let's not, let's not pretend that like, we're never going to have fear. Cause we just, it just, I've, I've talked to, you know, hundreds of women who are in amazing power, you know, positions of power and leadership who all have these fears. And, and it's just a matter of how they've learned to respond and bring fear along, but not let it drive the, the car. <laughs> so yeah, you you might bring that fear along, but have it take a seat and let 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 it watch you work, right? Just, <laughs> right. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, Steph, what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? I think critical thinking. Um, and it's evolved over the years and I've had to, because you have to think on your feet and be able the, you know, your, your clients, the people you work with, they're counting on you to deliver some solutions 
to deliver a unique approach through an indigenous lens and that ability to um, not make a snap decision or not make a, but my work here at the tribe, at my own tribe for 11 years and having my own business for 14 years is that that critical thinking is pretty useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what advice would you give your younger self, say 25 or 30 year old self? I would have said right now, I, I, I really commit to surrounding yourself with people who root for your rise. I wish I would have done it so much sooner. But as, as, as a younger woman, you don't have that, that poise or that, that a good way to articulate that without feeling like, are you trying to separate and, and you're better than, it's not that. It's that you really have to, if you want to think differently, if you want to uh, evolve, you've got to surround yourself with people who, who grow you, who mentor you, who ask you the tough questions, who have firm discussions with you about um, things that don't work, but that also really see you and celebrate with you when you have your successes. So Steph, I want to ask you what, you know, as a leader, as a business owner, as an indigenous woman, what is your greatest challenge right now? I would say that for me personally, I mean, language is important. Uh, my mom's a fluent speaker. Her siblings are fluent speakers. And, um, you know, it's been on my mind a lot. Like, where do we stand with our language and our language preservation? Um, you know, and it, and we learn all these other things, right? I learn business acumen, I learn communications, and it's like, as a Pueblo woman, like, what's going to be my commitment to learn my own language? Um, and, and how do you carve out time and just commit and, and do it? Um, so that's a challenge pers personally, I think. Um, but in a business sense, it's the juggle, I mean, you mentioned all these great awards, uh, but just circling back to some of my clients, they were like, I was going to call you, but you seem so busy. I was just like, okay, that social media piece and, you know, you try and share so that people really uh, get a feel for what you do, what you're capable of, what your accomplishments are so that they can think about hiring you and you can sustain your business and get more business. but some of my um, longstanding clients are like, wow, she's just really too busy. So <laughs> what's the good balance for marketing yourself? Um, and that even in the, you know, working for state contracts or whatever it may be, they would say we, they can't find native consultants who do tribal liaison work, communications work. Um, and I'm just always like, wow, how do you keep, getting in front of these people and doing marketing, but yet doing the work that you're good at so you can make sure your house is paid and your cars are paid and the kids have what they need. Um, so just trying to be the everything to your business from the one who actually goes and does a work to the one who goes out and gets more work. And it, it's a, it's a yeah. cycle. Yeah. Yeah. The business development piece is, is so interesting because you have to spend a lot of time on that. And then it's like, how, when do you have time to actually do the work? It, it's a real, it's a real juggle for sure. It's been such a pleasure uh, talking to you today, Steph. Thank you so much. Thank you. It got me thinking about um, some new things and how to, how, yeah, I, I've grown from it. I love it. That's awesome.
That's it for our show today. Remember, if you need support to live your Well Woman life, head over to wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join us. Our monthly live event, Well Woman Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week.